Hi everybody, Josh Horn CPA here of Horn Valuation. Today I'm going to talk to you about a question I get very often, and that is, do I need a business valuation? Do you need one? I've spent a lot of time thinking about this and backing up and saying, okay, what are the key things that I would encourage you to take a look at even if you never talk to me or another advisor in this area. I am a CPA and a business valuation analyst just in case you did not know a lot of business valuation analysts are CPAs not a lot of CPAs are business valuation analysts. The ideal person to watch this is either a business owner an aspiring business owner or one of their advisors, an attorney or a financial planner, or it could be another CPA that just is not in the business valuation profession. This is where I concentrate my efforts and my practice. So this is very important to me and I and it's important to a lot of the clients that I see on an ongoing basis. What I've discovered over time is a lot of this really is based on psychology in the beginning and, and throughout the process. So that's kind of where I'm coming at this from today. Step back and go, okay, if I'm in your shoes, what do you need to look at? If you never talk to me or anyone else, what would I encourage you to take a look at? And there's an overarching theme and two primary question areas. So simple questions you should ask are going to be two that we're going to kind of the broad based theme questions we're going to talk about today. In your inner monologue, what should you be thinking about in your in your mind throughout this process? And we're going to keep it simple, okay? Because simple is easy and I believe in the KISS principle. What are the stakes? It's what I encourage everybody to look at in this. Whether it be a friendly situation, two, two people selling a business between one another, and there's no threats or friction between the two, all the way on the other extreme where we have two people that are fighting it out in litigation or divorce. There are stakes involved and they often revolve around people and money. So the number one thing I encourage you to take a look at are the people. It could be spouses, it could be children, it could be co-workers, it could be shareholders. So all the people involved. We're talking about real human beings here. And while my job is to separate the emotion from this when I assist, I recognize that it's always in the room. So who are the people involved? Who gets hurt if you're wrong? or if somebody else involved in this process is wrong. And if you're the advisor, does your client understand the implications? If they're wrong, if you're wrong, does everybody understand what that looks like? I'm gonna give you two extreme examples to illustrate this. Let's say you are this person or they are your client. A free wheeling entrepreneur, young, very successful, multiple businesses. They say, I want to get rid of this business. I don't really care what it's worth. I have no children. I have no spouse. Just sell it. Get rid of it. He or she understands the implications or you explain it to them and they move on and they're not worried about it. That's risky from what I have seen there are some people that choose to do that. Contrast that to a business owned by a husband and wife. And in this case, the, the, I, I saw this particular scenario. She and her son were shut out of the house. Get out. Not only that, but the business owner was committing fraud, tax fraud, and 
the value of the business was difficult to determine based on the fraudulent documents that I viewed. So those are really big extremes. You're talking about a family and future implications for their lifestyle and future implications for schooling and medical expenses and this and that. And then on the other extreme, you have the young person, freewheeler, who just doesn't care. Understand who's involved, understand the players, understand we're talking about real human beings. Because at the end of the day, that's really what this is about. Money. The people issues flow into the money issues. They're definitely interlinked. What does that look like? I'm going to go through some simple examples here. I don't want you to become a business valuation analyst, but I want you to kind of understand the numbers. I'm not going to try to teach you how to be a business valuation analyst. If you're not comfortable from any math at this point forward, that's fine. I advise you to get somebody else to help you, whether you are the business owner or the attorney advisor, the financial planner. If you don't understand how to find these numbers, in the financial statements. Understandably, that's not your area of expertise, but we're going to keep this real simple and talk about the money involved and how that affects the stakes. What's the downside risk if you're wrong? If your client is wrong and the decisions made today can impact everyone for years. That's that's something very important to keep in mind here. The ripple effects can be felt for decades down the line. Quantifying the downside risk, in my view, is extremely important. What's that look like? We're going to th go through a simple math example here. Where we're going to show cash flow divided by estimated risk get you to an estimated value of the business. Just Keep it real simple and don't use these numbers to value your business. It's for illustration purposes only. If it worked, it would be only by dumb luck. All right. I just want to illustrate the magnitude of what we're talking about here. Easy math. 50 grand divided by a 20% risk rate is $250,000 business potentially. Let's say we double those cash flows to 100 grand. Now you have a half a million dollar business. $500,000 or a half a million dollars in cash flows from that business could be a $2.5 million business potential. Let's say there's a mistake made. Let's say there's mistakes made anywhere along the way. Notice the impact along the way. Let's say instead of $500,000 in cash flows, it was actually $600,000 of cash flows. Instead, now it's a $3 million business. So the mark got missed by half a million dollars, potentially. In that, in that final one, I just want to show, let's say it's a half a million dollars of cash flows and we drop the risk rate instead, we have a $3 million business. So the risk rate is roughly 20% less than it would have been. So you can see that a five-figure cash flow can be a six-figure valued business. In this illustration, a six-figure cash flow can be a six to seven-figure value business. So the stakes are huge here. Huge, absolutely just unbelievable. And when you add on that some small businesses do not have particularly great records, it really gets a little bit scary. Now, you may not be one of those people. I hope you're not. If you're having trouble with your records, call me on that as well. But just know that I have seen over the years a lot of businesses that have poor records, some of which have even been maintained by other accountants. So what steps off the page at you? What jumps out? Well, as I stated before, one of the things that, that jumps out to me and hopefully to you is how quickly you can move up into a multi-million dollar business based on a relatively conservative amount of cash flows. So a half a million dollar business and cash flow. So $500,000 generating business could be a multi-million dollar business. In case you hadn't thought that through, some people don't think like a nerd like I am all the time. So just to kind of get your head around what that means potentially. Another thing is, is that $100,000 of cash flows is 
up or down can have a huge impact on the value of the business. So a mistake, uh, additional work to, to move those cash flows higher, whether it be on a consulting basis or just an error or whatever it is, notice that how much a hundred grand moves the value. Notice, hopefully you'll notice also too, that the idea of getting fixated on a number of to spend value in your business may not necessarily be the best way to think about this. And I'm not just being self-serving. Step back and look at this. If you never talk to me, if you can get a return on your investment of a half a million dollars by investing a fraction of that, would you do that? It's something to think about. It's also something to think about if you're in the litigation environment and you're an attorney. A half a million dollar swing in the value for your client to work with somebody to help close that gap for a fraction in fees might be a worthwhile investment. People pay realtor commissions all the time at uh, much higher percentage rates potentially. And uh, people don't think twice about that. So think about your return on your investment when you're thinking about it. It can be massive. It can be hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars, depending on where you put your efforts and whether or not that person, that consultant can help you move the cash flows higher and the risk lower. Let's recap the two themes. Just two. And the overarching, and that's where the stakes. People and money. That's really what I want you to think about. On the money issue, it's not a greed thing, but it's always there. Okay, it has to be talked about. It has to be put out in the open. It has to be understood. Real people can be hurt here if the process is shortcutted or mistakes are made. Your family, your coworkers, your other shareholders, your spouse. And that's what it's all about. This is Josh Horn, CPA of Horn Valuation. I've had a great time talking to you about this. Please get in touch with me if you want to understand this further, if you have questions about it. I get this question a lot. Do I need a business valuation? Do you need a business valuation? And what's that look like? Step back and think about what are the stakes and the, the people that are impacted or will be impacted, as well as the money that will either go into your pocket or not go into your pocket or go into your, your shareholder's pocket or not, depending on whether you're buying them out, or what the implications are for your client in divorce, litigation. Think about all those things before anyone actually sits down to write a report, or do any kind of consulting. And if you have trouble with the financial side of things, understandably, get someone to help you, please. Don't guess on cash flows. Don't guess on risks. Don't guess on what similar companies are selling for if you're not an expert in this area because it could cost you dearly. Have a great day. Josh Horn, CPA, Horn Valuation. Bye-bye.